Okay, for this first one, you're gonna need two of the little smaller canvases from Dollar Tree. And I'm just taking some glue, this is super glue from Dollar Tree, and then my hot glue, and I'm just gonna use a mixture of those two, and then glue the two canvases together. And then you are going to take that wood contact paper from Dollar Tree. I've used this so many times, I love this stuff. And you're just gonna cut a piece big enough so that you can wrap the entire canvas with it. And I did end up gluing it in some spots because I just wanted to make sure that it stayed in place. And then after you get that all glued in place, I'm gonna take some brown paint that I have and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of water and just to kind of make a little stain for it and paint the contact paper because I feel like it just looks a little more realistic when you put one little coat of paint on it. And then now I'm taking, this is one of those little furniture pads and we are gonna make the windmill. So I'm using that for the center and then I'm kind of just drawing the blades. So the first one I didn't end up using and the second one that I drew I made, um, I think I made eight of those. And then um, once you have those all cut out, I'm actually gonna take this floral wire that is also from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be gluing the little blades to this and then I'm also going to be taking that in a circle like that so that's gonna look like um, the part of the windmill. So once you get all the little blades glued onto the center, I'm making another little circular um, piece and that is gonna go right on top just to kind of reinforce it and hold it in place a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna glue this little wire in a circle and then glue it to the back of the blade and I did go outside and spray paint it with my gray spray paint. And I'm going to galvanize it with my platinum uh, acrylic paint. And I'm just taking a little sponge and dabbing that right on. And I have a video on my whole galvanizing method. I'll link that in the description box if you guys have not seen that yet. So then once you have that all painted, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm going to work on the stencil letters. So I have these little stencil letters that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint home on the little wood paper. And I, it kind of like bled a little bit when I took it off, so I just went ahead and took a little baby wipe and that cleaned it right up. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of my black paint mixed with the cocoa bean color that I use for rust, and I'm just gonna go around the entire windmill and just kind of make it look a little bit rusty. And then I am going to take a little bit of twine and glue this to the back of the sign. Um, so you can either hang this or I ended up just setting it up in my hutch and I think it looks so cute. So once you get that twine attached, you can go ahead and attach your little windmill. And that is it for this one. I think this one turned out so cute. For this next one, I'm using three different little canisters from Dollar Tree and then these little foam balls from Dollar Tree as well. These are gonna be part of the lid, like the little knobs on the lid. And what I'm going to do is just take all of the canisters and spray paint them my gray matte um, spray paint. And I am gonna attach the little knobs before I do that. So this is my go-to spray paint whenever I wanna galvanize anything. So after you are done spray painting those, I'm going to take my platinum acrylic paint and sponge it on there with my little sponge like I always do. Now I'm taking these little signs that I just made on the computer. Um, I'm just taking a little bit of Mod Podge on the back and I'm going to glue them onto the canister. I tried to Mod Podge the front of them, but the ink ended up running all over the place, so I do not recommend doing that unless it's completely dry. So I just printed out this one that says Country Farm Coffee, and then the other one says Country Farm Flower. And then just one little last finishing touch, I'm just tying a little bit of twine on there and tying it into a bow, and I did that for all three of them, and I think these turned out super cute, and I love them on my hutch. Mm -hmm. 
And now for this next little sign, I've gotten so many compliments on this one. This is my what the fork sign. I love this one and it's super easy. So I'm just taking this picture frame from Dollar Tree, take the glass out, and I'm actually going to paint it. I'm using a mixture between white paint and a little bit of brown, just so it's kind of like an off-white, like a cream color. And I'm just going to paint the entire frame that color. And then I'm also going to paint the fork the same color. So this fork that I used was actually from my mom. It's really cute. It has some cute little like designs on it. But you can absolutely pick up a fork at Dollar Tree and get the same effect. Next, I'm taking that same contact paper and I'm going to just cut a piece that is the same size as the glass from the frame and I'm just going to cover the entire frame with the contact paper. And if you have a Cricut, you can absolutely get like the lettering for that with the Cricut. It'll be probably a little neater than mine, but I do not have one. So I'm just taking some white acrylic paint and freehanding the what the. And then you're just going to glue the fork underneath. And that is it for this one. And you're going to obviously put it back inside the frame. And I just love this one. I have this on my hutch and I get quite a few compliments whenever this one is in the background of my video. For this one, I'm just taking two little pumpkins that I picked up at Dollar Tree. One is styrofoam and the other one is just like a little plastic one. And I went ahead and spray painted them my gray color. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this platinum acrylic paint as well and just make it make them galvanized. And once those are all finished painting, I'm taking these little wood stems from Dollar Tree and those are going to be the little stems of the pumpkins. And then I'm just taking a little bit of twine on each one and tying them in little bows just for a little added farmhouse touch. And then I'm taking a little bit of my black and brown paint just to go in the creases of the pumpkins to make them look a little um, rustic and like weathered. This next little sign, I picked up this little one from Dollar Tree and I'm just going ahead and painting it with my white acrylic paint. And then I wanna make it kind of look like wood. So I'm just taking this piece of wood, using it kind of like a ruler just to make lines all the way down the sign. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do that on the top part as well. Next, I'm taking this little stencil. I believe this is from Hobby Lobby and I'm using a mixture of um, silver and black paint and I'm just going to stencil this onto the little sign. And for this one, we are going to make a little mini washboard. So I'm taking these two separate pieces of cardstock. One, you want to have a design. The other one is just going to get painted. So it really doesn't matter what color it is. And you're going to use these little Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. And right now I'm just kind of laying them out and making it look like a little washboard. And once I get it laid out how I want, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue everything together. Next, I'm taking that same brown and water mixture and I'm gonna just stain this little washboard. And I did use about two coats to get it 
to the color that I wanted it to be. And then after that, I'm taking this pink paper and you're going to want to cut this pretty long because this is going to end up getting folded like accordion style and this is going to be the actual washboard. So I'm once you get that cut, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint it with my gray spray paint and then I will galvanize it in a second. But first, I'm going to take this floral cardstock and just figure out the size I need to get it to fit in that little window. And this is just going to kind of be the top part, like a decorative part of the washboard. So once you get that cut out, go ahead and glue it in there. Now I'm taking that paper that I spray painted and I'm going to go ahead and galvanize it with my platinum paint and my sponge. You guys know the drill. And then once that's dry, you're going to go ahead and start folding it into a little accordion style. And the piece of paper is probably too long, but that's okay. You can just cut it to the size you need. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue it in between the little pieces of the Jenga blocks. And this is going to be the actual little washboard part. All right, this next one kind of goes along with the washboard. We are pretty much using the same materials. So you're gonna make a little ladder with these Jenga blocks and go ahead and glue them all together when you figure out how you want it to look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with the same paint mixture. And now I'm taking that same floral paper and I'm going to make like a little um, like a little throw for the ladder. If you want to call it a throw, like a blanket, whatever. And you're just going to kind of fold it over so it's going to just look like it's hanging right there on the ladder. So just fold it and then glue it on down and that is it for that one. So that one and the washboard go really cute next to each other. For this next one, we're going to make a little miniature scale. So I'm taking those Jenga blocks as well, and I'm just going to go ahead and glue three pieces together, and that's going to be the little base. And then I'm going to take another two and put those um, horizontal, no, not horizontal, vertical, on top of that little base. And this is going to be kind of the part of the scale that is holding the top part. And then once you get that glued on, I'm taking some tiny little wood dowels that I have, and I'm going to cut it into little... I would say, I mean, less than half an inch pieces, and this is gonna hold the actual scale part. So once you get those cut up, you're gonna go ahead and glue those right on top. Next, I'm taking this little scale picture that I found online, and um, it prints out a lot bigger than this. So what I did was just made, when I printed it, I made it at about 50% so that it's a little bit smaller. For my larger scale, I used the regular size, but for this one, I wanted it a little bit smaller. And then I went ahead and glued that onto some poster board just so it was a little sturdier and then cut that out. And then for the actual scale part, I'm just taking some poster board again, cutting it into kind of a square and I'm gonna cut the edges so that I can form little lips on the sides so that it actually looks like, like a scale piece. So I'm just doing those little slits and then folding it and you're just gonna hot glue it. And this was just kinda, I had to mess around with it. At first I cut it a little too rectangular so I had to make it more into a little square shape. And then you're just gonna go ahead and glue this onto the top part of the scale. And then once you have it all attached, you can go ahead and spray paint it with the white. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue on the little scale piece. And then now I'm taking some black paint and just going around the edges of the whole entire scale just to make it look a little more farmhouse. 
and I just love the black and white. It goes really good in my hutch with my black and white checkered stuff, and I just think this turned out so cute. And now we're gonna make some little wooden pumpkins that were inspired by this picture I found on Pinterest. It's not gonna be as thick as those, but it, they look really cute. So again, I'm taking these little Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna make three rows of them, um, three stacked high and then four across. And you're gonna actually do two layers of it. So once you get all of those glued together, I'm taking one of the little brown pieces and gluing that on the top to be the stem. And then I'm also taking these other ones and I'm making a little bit shorter of one. So it's, they're going to be different heights. And now I'm taking this orange paint that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint them all orange. And the brown ones that I used, I ended up spray painting them white first just so that the brown or the orange would cover it. And they turned out to be like different shades of orange. And I actually really liked how those turned out. And as a finishing touch, I'm just gonna add a couple pieces of twine and tie them in little bows. And these turned out really cute. And then in another DIY, I ended up flipping them around and drawing little pumpkin faces on them. So you can use those at Halloween. So it kind of goes from fall to Halloween. For this next one, I'm taking these little wood stems from Dollar Tree. I am just kind of stacking them together, not really a rhyme or reason, but we are making a little pineapple. So once you get them to the shape that you want, you can go ahead and start gluing them together. And I'm just using my hot glue gun for this one. And now I'm taking this little, it's like a little succulent piece. It came in a set and I had like a little stick at the bottom that you stick into like a plant, like a styrofoam planter or something. And I just cut that off and I'm gluing that right to the top. And I think this thing looks like a little pineapple. I just love this one. I made this for some summer DIYs and I just love this one. For this next one, I'm taking a little plastic um, cutting board from Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and cover it with my wood contact paper. You guys are very familiar with that. And just kind of cut it to the size and then just go ahead and wrap it around the cutting board. It was a little tricky to do the handle, but just kind of, if you kind of cut slits in the paper so that it kind of goes around it a little bit better, it, I think it'll end up looking just fine. Next, I'm taking some little letters that I had cut out from my stencils and I went ahead and spray painted them gray and I'm gonna galvanize them. So I'm using that same platinum paint and sponging it right on. And then once those are dry, I'm gonna take some little, they're like little sticky pads from Dollar Tree and I put those on the back to kind of give the piece a little dimension. So they kind of stick up a little bit um, so that the letters aren't just directly on the cutting board. So once you are finished with that, you're going to go ahead and take a little bit of twine and tie that around the um, handle of the cutting board. And then I'm going to stick some of my lavender flowers in there. And then once you get that all in there, you can't even tell that the paper is kind of a little, it's not perfect on the handle, but once you get the flower in there, it is totally fine. Okay, for this next one, you're taking these little salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray paint them with my gray and then galvanize them with my platinum paint again. And then you're just gonna take a little bit of twine and wrap that around the top of these. And then I'm just gonna stick a little bit of those lavender flowers in this one. And that is it for these two. This one was super duper easy and I just think it's such a cute little touch and it looks so cute in my hutch right now. <music> 